looks like we got a couple people here. Can you guys hear me okay? It's been so long since I've done a live, I can't remember how to run this thing. Somebody want to shoot a message? All messages visible. Still not seeing nothing. Oh, there we go. I got a hello. Hey, what's up, guys? It's going pretty good. Just hanging out at the hockey rink. Young fellas doing some uh, practicing. Hey, Katie. Going pretty good. Sodium induction. I'm alignment too. Whereabouts are you alignment? Keith in Connecticut. What's up, Keith? So I got to warn you guys, I'm on like a three inch long charger here. So I can only get my phone so high up here. Love your channel from me. And thanks, Travis. Uh, Franny the Fisher, what's up, man? Good to see you here. Oklahoma, local municipality. Sweet. Where are you? I am in New Brunswick, Eastern Canada. Intern Lyman. Fun to watch you guys out in the world. Any big storm problems lately? So, this is from uh, Eric. This past weekend, young fella had a big four-day hockey tournament in another province and they were calling for a major storm so they canceled everyone's vacation um where it was a hockey tournament and i had it booked for months they still did let me go but while i was gone there was some crazy stuff going on we had a pole the transformer bank fall it's probably about two hours out of town i think it was a car dealership it fell and crashed through the roof of the building the transformers landed inside the building uh, I got some pictures of it for my buddy, so I'll try and include those on a video here in the near future. Coming at you live from Lake Michigan. I forgot I got to scroll through these messages. They don't auto-scroll. How is it dealing with telecom companies sometimes for their lines? We pretty much look after all the telecom stuff, all the transfers. We don't do any new installs, but we do all the transfers. Uh, if there's a broken pole from a vehicle accident or something, we'll literally put everything back up in the air. The only, my huge pet peeve with the telecom stuff is probably 50% of the wires up in the air are abandoned. I wish they would dismantle stuff as it gets abandoned, but they don't. So that causes a bit of a nuisance sometimes. But other than that, easy enough to work on. There's some, believe it or not, heavier strains on their stuff than most of our stuff in distribution. TJ C class, what's up, man? Not too much. Central Florida, greetings from Germany. Nice. When's the next day in the life? I will try and capture one of those very soon. Believe it or not, even when I get into the 45 minute long episodes of the Being Lyman, they're actually easier to edit than any of the other episodes just because I don't cut a lot of the fat out. A lot of times I'm just talking about what I'm doing so I can kind of blow through the editing pretty quick so I'll try to get one of those up and running pretty soon but as I mentioned with my young fellas hockey tournament last weekend I had to take a couple vacation days from work plus the weekend was gone we've got another hockey game four hours out of town this weekend it's leaving very little time to, to do any filming or any editing but I'm trying my best to keep up that being said if you guys have any ideas or any questions for videos definitely let me know I got a pen and paper here actually so I can Write that stuff down. Pretty generic question. How is the eclipse for you? This is from Spurch Spurch. So funny story. There's, I had like four calls from four different residents. They said every light on a street was out. And uh, I started kind of diagnosing it's underground wiring. It's a huge pain in the butt to work on. And every time I went up to a light, it came on and worked. So I just gave up on it. 
figured one of these days I'll take a drive at night and see which ones are actually out. So that's what I did during the eclipse. We were almost in totality here, we were right under the black line of totality. And uh, I went to that street and as soon as that moon went across the sun, I drove the whole length of the street and there was one street light out. So I fixed that the next day. I had to run new, all new wires through the pole and everything. Troubleshooter in Long Island, New York. They show one of your videos in the Academy Coop up. Good stuff. That's from Fat Tony. Thanks, Fat Tony. I actually had an opportunity, I'm going to say six years ago, to go to Long Island, New York. Didn't have my passport. And I don't, they probably would have let me across the border, but they didn't want to chance it. So I had to give up my spot, which sucked. I really would have loved to gone to Long Island, New York. So my partner went instead, had all kinds of great stories. Yes, I do have my passport now, of course. Sodium, I do fiber and telecommunications. Today I found an underground splice box with the cover ripped off. Going to be an expensive repair. Those are a pain in the butt. Uh, a lot of our covers get ripped off. We had the old green fiberglass ones, and they can break off pretty easy. So I've got a whole bag of 3-8 stainless steel bolts and a, a washer that fits it. I just grab a spare, I keep a spare cover on the truck sometimes, and I'm able to at least temporarily secure them until we can dig them up. The new ones we have, it's like a, I don't even know what you call it. It's a, like a synthetic concrete. There is a name for it, FlexCon, or I can't remember. Anyways, they last much, much better. The lids probably weigh like 80 pounds. You don't want to jam your fingers on them. Franny the Fisher, they're switching mainly from overhead to underground here. Directional boring is big money too. Big time, that's for sure. What is required to get my journeyman card? It depends on where you are geographically. Here in Canada, we have a red seal test that's doesn't matter what your province you're in. Basically, you do the testing in the province, that's a little bit different. It goes through four blocks. You need 7,200 hours of work while indentured into the trade through your apprenticeship. And uh, you have to write a test at the end of every year. And then once all four tests are complete, you write your final red seal test, which is the one that's the same federally. If you aren't with a company full time, you can still acquire your hours, you can challenge your tests and you can challenge the red seal test in the end. But that's just for our area. It's much different, I'm sure, in the US and other countries. How was your apprenticeship on third term? What challenges did you have to face to get where you are? That's a good question. Our apprenticeship was pretty loaded. We did a full year and a half in transmission, working on towers, uh, doing live line work on 347 KV. Um, we did a ton of underground metering. We even did engineering and staking. We literally touched every aspect of the trade so it was fast the, the four years absolutely flew by probably the biggest challenge is where you're bouncing around through so many different tasks you might work on towers for six months and then jump onto a distribution crew and go wire transformer bank you're up in the air wiring a bank and i don't want to say you feel stupid but you almost you get a little bit hard on yourself because you feel like hey i'm three years into this trade oh my god how do i wire this bank but you might not have touched one for two years might Biggest advice for when you are an apprentice, or even if you're not an apprentice, when you're doing a task, if, if you don't know, ask, because I mean, unless you're asking the same questions every day, then maybe you're not cut out for the trade, but I'd rather have an apprentice with me stop what he's doing and ask questions than get himself or somebody else hurt or get himself into a mess. Sven Aguilar, how are you? I am good. How do you guys replace old direct buried primary cable? If you have any stolen service in your area, do you use cable and conduit? So yes, we all of our primary cable is in conduit now. We do have some direct buried primary cable. We've we've dug it up and spliced it before in a pinch, although that's not ideal. The last probably seven or eight trouble calls that I had where it was direct buried cable that blew up underground, we built an overhead line. And a lot of times that's because it was on like a Sunday or middle of the night. So we'll literally set a pole in somebody's front yard, run wires over the roof of their house if we have to, just to get power back on. And then we'll reevaluate the following week, whether we're gonna run some duck works and run new underground, which is often the case, or run a new, more permanent overhead structure. 
there was a few times where we ended up buying an easement and leaving the poles right where we we set them i think i actually covered one of those jobs in a video a couple of years ago down east maine enjoying the power while it lasts i heard there was a lot of outages in maine last week a stub across the street fell and they cut our power to fix it easily actually while i was at the hockey tournament last week i was probably four hours out of town phone rang at 7 a.m dispatch are you near home at all i was like nope then my other phone started ringing i ended up having like 37 missed calls in a matter of an hour there was a bad vehicle accident it was where a three-phase line double dead end transformer ton of telecommunications car hit that pole and it fell right across a main road it was crazy huge interruption to traffic it was right seven o'clock in the morning when everyone's going to work and it was an absolute mess i had some wicked fomo on that one i wish i had been able there to wish i had been able to respond and help out to that one but the guys that did respond did great so big kudos to them i don't know how far behind my messages i am here so i apologize guys clips are just convenient dark time for alignment do you know any tips for public if the wire is down besides staying away anything that i should keep in mind when sending in a report for linemen some companies now allow you to send in your report online and actually submit a photo of it so if if the company in your area has that as an option that's amazing myself i've got a really good relationship with the local fire departments the, the five fire departments in my jurisdiction as well as the uh the town and the community uh, all the community workers really so when there's a bad accident usually i'm getting photos of it before i even get in the cab in my truck those photos the pictures were a thousand words right so those photos help out a lot other than that sometimes when you call in people will try to say like i think it's telephone or i think it's coax or it's power line or it is or if you don't know you you don't want to guess and even if you do a telephone wire there's so much tension on it it can wrap up around a live wire even even the primary when when those wires break so biggest thing the information is just to communicate with them the urgency of it if it's near a school near a park if it's blocking a road if a transport comes by and it's going to hit a low wire make sure you communicate that stuff so they can prioritize prioritize it accordingly with their crews sometimes i'll get a wires down call 99 percent of the time it's a communication drop in someone's backyard so if i'm an hour out of town i'm working on a street light or something i get a call they say yeah there's a wires down in someone's backyard i'm going to finish the job i'm doing i'm not going to take off right away i mean i'm not going to stay there for two hours and work either but but if i know it's a wire down across the road it doesn't matter what i'm doing trucks packing up and i'm i'm going to hit the road so it's important to communicate the urgency of the call do you use single wire earth return in our in our region that's from trader joe we use uh multi-grounded systems so every pole um every neutral every everything's bonded together our neutral is bonded to ground all of our case grounds are bonded to the ground which is also bonded to neutral everything's tied together so there's no difference in potential in anything that's not energized for lack of better words do you work for yourself or for a company i work for a company i have a very unique position within the company that i have my own territory that i and the first responder for i keep the vehicle at my house at all times i'm on call at all times so i'm not a big drinker or anything um pretty much phone can ring any day of the year any time of day or night i i get that first call always now like last weekend and this weekend coming up where i'm gonna be out of town i simply let the dispatcher know and they'll have somebody in the neighboring community cover my area if it's storm conditions then they'll put an extra guy they'll pay him a couple hours to cover my calls on standby for the weekend. I have enough battery to unplug my phone here for a bit. Do all high leg transformers have three single phase transformers and can, or can a high leg transformer sit in a single can? You put me on the spot here because it's been a long time since I touched any high leg banking. I believe you can have a high leg transformer with two two transformers to produce three phase power at the high leg pretty sure if anyone can confirm that definitely correct me in the comments here delta primaries they're pretty much all gone now 
Actually, that's Julian. He says, in Northern California, we have a lot of Delta and almost exclusively using two bushing transformers. So we used to have a few setups like that. There's, I don't think there's any left in my area at all. Favorite hockey team? Uh, I'll have to say the Maple Leafs. That's my young fella's favorite team. Um, I, I like Washington. I like, like watching Ovechkin play. But uh, I'm not so much of a big NHL fan as I am just a fan of taking my young fella out to the rink. He's got hockey like four or five nights of the week. It's pretty crazy. Sven is 23, second year working as Lyman. Do you have any pets? I had the best dog in the world. Uh, he just passed away last month. He, he was a rescue and he went through three or four families because he was hyperactive. He wasn't allowed to be around kids. He was a pit bull mix. I'm spitting all over the place. Um, and I was living by myself, so I took on the challenge of helping out this dog. Within two weeks, I could have him off leash in the woods, walking around puddles. In fact, I think I, I'm not sure if I locked the video or not, but if you go into my videos and sort by oldest, I have one, my dog's name was Ghost, and it says something like Ghost Dodging Puddles or something. That was three weeks after I got him. He was an extremely well-behaved dog, miss him a lot. He ended up getting bone cancer in his, in his jaw, the whole side of his face was with cancer he had weekly vet visits and uh he lived without any pain for six months and once once ourselves and the vet and him started showing that he wasn't comfortable we had to put him down there just last month so that was tough uh agreed about having power in Dunny's Maine. friday will be another test I assume there's more weather coming friday have things improved around control of prevention of back feed from home solar during outages all of our solar installations are inspected by the province. Unlike regular installations, if there's a new building, they apply for the inspection. A lot of them just get shoved through, especially if it's a reputable electrician. These solar installs, every single one of them are inspected very closely by an inspector that works for the province. I'm actually going to do a video. I'm hoping, I think the guys are coming back April 19th because I outfitted my entire house with solar. So I'm gonna do a video called Bob's Klein Goes Solar and I'm gonna have the installer walk you guys through some of that installation. So it should be a really good video. I'm uh, pretty excited to get that one up and running. Probably take a ton of editing, so hopefully I'll have it up by the end of the month. But I kind of totally diverted off that question there, prevention of back feed. So there has to be a rapid shutdown so that as soon as there's no power from the grid, the solar system has basically goes down you're not allowed to feed your house off of solar when the grid's down it's just regulations within our province the only way around that is if you have some lithium batteries your solar's still down but you can run off the batteries while the grid's down uh rock dumb question but are you having problems with general links down there we are in east coast canada and there's can't we are in east coast canada that there's going to be a recall on them the last storm I had a fire call and when I showed up, fire department was there, they shut off the main break to the customer's house. There's a Jenner link. The customer took a video of his Jenner link and there was literally fireballs shooting out of it and loud banging and popping. We pulled the Jenner link off the house, put his meter back on, get his power back on. Everything was safe, but the unit was junked. I'm not sure what happened to it. It's almost like the auto transfer switch clicked on and off as the recloser was activating and it got stuck half open or something. I've personally had that problem with three installs over the last maybe three years. The other two, there wasn't fire and sparks flying from it. They just got stuck in the open position. So the customer lost power. So for the amount that are installed, we haven't had a whole lot of problems. They're a good unit, depending. Um, at my house, I have a pony panel with a generator plug and a transfer switch with a lockout on it. That's the cheapest, probably most efficient. By the general link, you can run your entire home uh, one one area at a time. You, they typically max out at 30 or 40 amp. If your home's a 200 amp entrance, you're not going to run everything your, off your home through a general link. But you can, for example, shut off your baseboard, shut off your hot water heater, and get all your fridges and freezers going. Then you can shut off your fridges and freezers, get your hot water going, 
uh, things like your lights and TV don't use a whole lot of amperage, so you can pretty well kind of switch back and forth when you're using the house. So they're good for that. Brian Anderson, good evening. Do you guys ever joint bury with t communications at all? We do kind of. It's in the same pit, but not the same concrete duct bank. So they are separated in that aspect. Claudio, hello from Homestead, Florida. I gotta plug my phone back in. It's just giving me a light here that it's gonna die. Claudio, I'm a lineman apprentice. Thank you for the videos. They have helped me understand more. Does the energy does the energy in NB is nationalized just like in Quebec? I'm not sure what you mean by that question. We buy and sell power in our neighboring provinces and through the states. Oh, and then Rock says only from the nuclear plant, New Brunswick. Uh, Davmar, Aaron, since watching your channel, I have learned to be careful about electricity. Is there a portable thing you can carry to warn you that there's high voltage near your body? Dave in Washington. There's, we use proximity indicators that have settings from 120 volts all the way up to 500,000 volts. If you don't work for a power company, there's no reason to have something like that really and if you did i wouldn't recommend checking to see if cable has 500,000 volts on it with it because you have to have a 12 foot long slated hot stick but you can get the little they look like little pens with a red and green light in them get them at the hardware store they're not very expensive they just test for 120 volts a lot of uh carpenters and just electricians kind of have them in their pocket when they're working on houses they're they're a good rig for just checking if the circuit's live Reap what you sow. What is a cutout? A cutout is basically a switch, but I don't even know why they call it a cutout. There's a spring loaded fuse link in it. Some of them, some of their solid blade. So it's literally a switch. You open and close it to disconnect power. But the majority of them have uh, a, a we call it door. It's a barrel, a hollow barrel. And there's some kind of a chemical powder inside that. There's a fuse link in that. When the fuse link's tiny, super tiny. And when the current gets high enough to melt that fuse link, there's going to be an explosion because of the arc flash. That heat has a chemical reaction with that powder that's lined in the walls in there, which extinguishes the arc. And then the spring drops the door open to disconnect the power and the arc at the same time. Andrew McCabe, longtime listener, first time caller. I'm a telecom lineman in NC. I would love our energy company to catch our pole transfers. The energy company use line contractors and they leave us floaters. Hey man from Sookie or Sook, BC. Eric, what do you guys do differently heading into the spring, summer versus winter? A lot of people think that the winter is our busy time and it's not at all. Winter is slow for the majority of the time. Summer, ton of construction. Because our summers are so short, when the good weather hits, there's machinery going like crazy there's a lot of accidents thanks dave mayor um, there's a lot of accidents from machinery uh, people start getting excited driving way too fast with cars you get a lot of broken poles a lot of underground lines get hit and then just a lot of construction in general we have hundreds and hundreds of units probably thousands of units of apartment buildings going up right now we're also doing a huge overhead to underground conversion in our downtown area other than that winter time a lot of times we'll try to get our inspections done we, we do want to check each and every one of our more sophisticated equipment our pad mounts our uh, power transformers our switching units uh, regulators reclosers so i try to get that done throughout the winter we had storm 70 mile an hour wind lost power for only 10 minutes shout out to the guys and gals at slamco here in south louisiana kept the lights on Watching from UK, new viewer, you were me you were recommended. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Genius Bar Live Music. Why do trans why do the pad mount transformers hum? Uh, the engineering side of my brain is not here today. But there's a video I did on pad mounts, and somebody answered that question in super great detail. Can't remember which video it was, but that's, that's a really great thing about the community on that watch my videos is a lot of the viewers 
a lot of viewers are linemen a lot of really smart people view the channel and are really selfless with their knowledge they engage in a lot of the questions and it takes a huge load off my back some of the more technical questions i gotta dive into the books from back when i did my school if it's stuff i can't remember but the, the viewers are all super great so definitely check out the comments comment sections when you're watching videos and don't be scared to ask questions if i can't answer it guarantee there's someone who will uh, Trader Joe in my area, only neutral line one, line two, line three is provided. Grounding is done by each homeowner within uh, power doesn't have to provide central lithium line. What's your opinion? Why doesn't the power company provide a central earthen line? What's your opinion? I I like a multi-ground system much better. It's a pain because a lot of people steal the copper. So we actually don't even use copper anymore. We use like an alloy now. But I feel it's a lot safer because when you're climbing on a pole, everything everything's same potential. Again, except the primary or whatever is supposed to be energized. Also, if a homeowner loses their ground, it's not the end of the world. Our system will compensate for much of that. There are some advantages to not having a multi-grounded system. Mostly revolves around its cheaper builds. But uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to work on anything but a multi-ground system. One of our neighboring provinces had a 60-foot pole. They wanted me to climb. It was double circuit. And there was two isolated neutrals, one for each circuit. Three spanned from the substation. And those neutrals were obviously carrying a return. They weren't, they weren't grounded. They were isolated right to the XO at the power transformer. And I asked them what the procedure was to climb up through on hooks on two isolated neutrals and they couldn't answer my question so we made sure that they ordered in a 60 foot boom truck and not climb that pad mounts on because of coils have you seen how other countries do power distribution who do you think does it better oh music came on economically and safety wise there's a lot of viewers from the uk and a lot of them absolutely grill my comment section for how bad our power system is compared to theirs. I've never been in Europe at all. I've read a little bit about it. And from what I gather, it's a 240 system instead of a 120, 240 Edison. It's much more efficient, cheaper to build, easier to work on, a lot more underground, a lot more sophisticated equipment. A lot of the reason that we have the, the 12240 and the 60 hertz is here is just because our entire infrastructure was half built before the technology came around where they could start going the other route. And it just didn't make sense to start from scratch. So I don't know a whole lot about that, just a little bit of stuff I read. But a lot of the European viewers do mention a lot of things about their system being superior. And I believe that. They hum because they don't know the words. Rusty B. Did a transformer ever explode? I haven't had a transformer actually explode on me in years, probably 10 years. Even when people say, oh, when a transformer blows, there's a huge blue flash in the sky and all that. That's that huge blue flash. A lot of times it's still just the cut out fuse blowing. It's loud. There's a lot of fire coming from it. It's pretty, pretty aggressive, but I had, I think, three of them within a year one time where I showed up, the lid was off 200 feet away, the oil was half gone, and what oil was left in the transformer was on fire. Messy scene, I've had a house completely covered in burning oil before. You don't want to be around a transformer that actually blows up. Adam Olson, magnetic field makes the iron core expand off and on 60 times per second, so it expands and contracts 60 times per second. I've noticed in some areas around here that there's a transformer every pole and other areas are further apart and run low voltage between poles. Any advantage to one method or the other, typically cost. When we build a subdivision in town, we'll plan for there to be a home on every single lot. Usually the plan's already in place. It shows the division of the lots. We'll put say a 50 or 75 KVA on every third pole. We'll run a little bit larger size triplex to account for voltage drop. 
in that 75 kva you'll easily pick up eight houses if we're out in the country the whole subdividing thing hasn't really gone on yet they know there's houses going in but one of them might have six acres one of them might have one acre two acres we'll just run the poles primary neutral nothing on them a lot of times we'll just drop a 25 kva on the pole in front of the house to feed them another house builds just down the road we'll drop a 25 kva in front of his house instead of going back and stripping everything but it really comes down to cost and whoever the designer is there's not a whole lot of advantage on one setup versus the other do you have to go to college to be a lineman? No, you do not. Um, in my province, the company I work for, the college is basically the, the farm pool for the company. So if you went to this college, you get first dibs at applying for a position, but we certainly do hire journeyman linemen off the streets, for lack of better words, or from other companies. As long as you have your ticket, you can challenge in a lot of jurisdictions, you can challenge the testing. And as long as you can prove that you had the amount of hours worked in, you have somebody sign off on all your tasks. There's, there's a few ways to go about it, but regardless of which direction you're taking, whether you go to school or not, you do need to put in the time, which is typically four years, 7,200 hours and passed all the testing. What's your thought on straight versus twisted shank climbers? I like the twist just because it's what I'm used to. That's one of those things I've had a guy give me a pair of Klein straight hooks. He said they were the most comfortable things he's ever used. I tried them and I couldn't stand them. It's just what you're used to. A lot of times it's whatever you start on. Different manufacturers of your climbing spurs put pressure points in different areas, whether it's on the inside or the outside of your ankle or the top of your foot or the back of your heel or whatever. There's different pressure points. And once you get used to a pair, it's, it's hard to switch. Do you guys have trip saver cutout matched reclosers in your area? If you do, how do you manage them or open them? We do have trip savers. We just started a new standard where we have a load break backup cutout so that we don't have to operate the trip saver under any load whatsoever. There's literally load break on one side of the bowl, trip saver on the other, so the trip saver can use this reclosing to prevent the outages. If the trip saver is open, I'll go open the solid blade load break cutout. I can remove the trip saver, reset it, close it back in. I'm not picking up any load. They're not fun to close under load. They fall back open sometimes, draw a pretty big arc. Did a power meter ever catch on fire? We've had a few. One of them was because of a error on the electrician's side. And we had a few guys that put on a 13 jaw meter and put it on a little bit sideways it's not good destroyed the whole thing dank dank pancake i'm a system operator and the most difficult thing to learn is underground networks downtown denver is a network with multiple feeds that is essentially paralleled at all times do you have these yes but on a much smaller scale so our our feeds that are paralleled they're never actually paralleled they're basically one device away from being paralleled so we do have redundant feeds especially at our hospitals. All of our hospitals have redundant feeds. Um, our downtown core has several redundancies in the design where if we lose a feed at any point, we can isolate that feed, close in another switch and pick it right back up pretty efficiently. You legit rock, man, Dean. Thanks, man. Most annoying thing about any Ford is that noise from Franny the Fisher. Yeah, and when you close the door and leave your keys in and the horn starts going, yeah. I'm envious, OG the German power grid, three phase to every home. Europe has a 230, 400 volt system, 50 hertz, three phase for all customers here. There's some clarification on that. Wonder how far behind in these comments I'm at. Oh, not too awful far. I'm trying to get everyone's here. What call comes in that all linemen just dread? You always seem so professional. You ever get calls that frustrate you? I, obviously we get called in family dinners, middle of the night when you're tired, inconvenient times for personal reasons. When I get those calls and it's because of an outage from weather or whatever, I don't mind a bit. I'll get up any time of day or night. I'll miss anything I have to to save somebody's life at a car accident or respond to a house fire. 
what I really hate is when it's a call because of somebody's negligence. Usually that's from vandalism and theft. When we have a break-in in our substation, somebody pulled the wrong wire, almost fried themselves, knocked out power to half the city, and I got to wake up in the middle of the night because this guy did that. That really gets under my skin for a few reasons. One is I had to wake up. Two, a lot of the public get really pissed off because they're saying, geez, it's a nice night out, no wind, and power's out to half the city. They don't know it's because of vandalism. So that, that bugs me. I hate those calls. Just kind of another pet peeve. Uh, process of building a house, the utility is threatening to remove the pole and transform if I don't get permits approved within the next six months. Ever heard of this? Our, our, our date is like two years. If there's, let's say a house was demolished, the infrastructure is in place. If two years go by, we're going to remove that infrastructure. If the customer is in contact with us and they're like, look, I'm building here for sure. I'm in the process, get the permit. We're not going to go and yank all that stuff out of the ground. We're going to give him the time he needs, unless, of course, he's really taking us for a ride. But generally speaking, I think that would be kind of ignorant for them to go through the trouble of removing infrastructure if somebody's building there. Can you sing Glenn Campbell, I'm a lineman for the county, and drive the main road searching in the south? <laughs> what about Padma with the blown elbow from a recent video? I'm not sure what happened with that one. I, I'm assuming water got into the connection at some point. I don't know, because usually the elbow itself is what blows up. This one here was the insert going in, but the pad mount itself is actually, I don't know what happened to that. How does 7,200 volts feel? I don't want to know. Love the videos from High Man's. Did you accidentally cut a TV coax line? Probably accidentally cut one or two of them before. Is inrush current a common problem in pad mounts? No more common than it would be for, for any electrical setup, really. Do you have any PME9 or Vista pad mount switches? Yes. We got some Vistas for sure, PME9. I can't remember. Uh, we ordered a whole bunch of new equipment in for the underground conversion for downtown. A whole lot of new stuff. It's outside of the area that I cover, so I want to try to get involved in it so that I am familiar with the equipment, but I haven't fooled around with it a whole lot yet. What to do with old power line cables? I got a couple old cables from a power guy. He gave it to me. We recycle all of our old stuff. If, if there's an old line going down to someone's barn and the old fella says, hey, can I use that to run to my shed? It doesn't bother me any. But generally speaking, we do recycle all of our equipment. Sometimes we'll leave a pole behind if somebody's going to make use of it, save us from bringing equipment in, yanking it out. Basically, if it works out in our best interest and we're not losing money from it, then no skin off our back. How do you handle burnout? being on call that's from uh, nate cross that's a good question so i'm super lucky the company that i work for is really good with that stuff i've literally called my boss before said i got a call it's a two-hour drive can you send me another guy and the boss would say oh do you want to go home and i said no no i'm good i just i just can't drive right now i'm just tired kind of thing send a guy over he'll drive i'll have a little snooze in the passenger seat once we get there both of us get out and we're good to go if i call him up and i say look i need a week off no problems i have to use vacation obviously for the 8 4 30 time but for the after hours i can get somebody to cover me at any time as long as i'm not taking advantage of it if i call every weekend obviously i'd lose my position but they are definitely really good with that stuff helicopter space replacement method interested if offered uh, that was the direction I was heading with my career. I wanted to work out of a chopper. And then I landed this position where I work out of my house and keep track at home. And it's been a lot of fun. And then, uh, really having a lot of, uh, really good engagement with the community and, and stuff. It's, so I kind of changed career paths. I'm happy where I'm at now, but I would definitely love to work out of a chopper. 
What happens if you change the tap of a voltage regulator under load? I know that you're not supposed to, however, I've never seen the result. Uh, voltage regulator, you can change the tap under load. Uh, transformer, you can't, depends. There are some, but generally speaking, a transformer to have an offload tap changer. Pad mode transformer, power transformer, or pole mounted transformer. If you switch that while it's live, it's gonna blow up. Wouldn't be good. What's the biggest service you've landed at any site, industrial, commercial, or whatever? We got a one megawatt. Well, actually, no. There's there's a uh, pot plant manufacturer place that's kind of owned by the government, but kind of not. They have a 138 kV substation just for the one building, and it takes like full minute to drive by the building it's huge that's probably the biggest service that we have in town here i don't know what the service entrance is rated for but it's basically a substation the size of what i have in an entire village in another part of town for one building do you plan the low voltage distribution and subdivisions differently since evs are popular have area codes been changed basically as any electrical work is done at a person's home that has a drastic change on the demand, they're supposed to apply for the permit. That permit goes through both the province and us. And as permits come in and we see that load change in subdivisions, we upgrade and maintain the system accordingly. When work is done without permits, that's when that can get a bit hairy. If everyone adds a mini split and it's just below the requirement for the permits, but you have 150 houses add one and they were all on oil heat previously, it's might start overloading the lines our lines are generally overbuilt quite a bit they're running at like 30 percent capacity most of the time so it, it takes quite a bit but if it does get to the point where things are overloaded then we'll we'll upgrade the lines accordingly kevin thanks for keeping power on bob no problem one of the hospitals near me has a dedicated substation in the back how do you put how do you put stay insulators on guy wires? Uh, our guy wires, we use epoxy rods, which is a, like a epoxy insulated six foot long rod. Just basically has a hook on either end. We put preform through it. Um, I'll have to show that in the video one of these days. Kind of hard to explain, but it's a super simple setup. If you ever got stung while by wasps while working on a pole, yes, quite a few times. It sucks. Low sir, retired transmission distribution switcher from Chicago Power Company, ComEd. My question is overhead linemen are allowed to switch in the substation yards. In Chicago, they're separate. We have a separate trade for that, but for emergencies, we do all the switching in substation. We, we can, we're certified to work on transmission, distribution, and substation. There is a separate trade here for each one. Our subtext are called electromechanics. We have transmission distribution linemen. When I get a call at three in the morning, Anything I got to operate, I'm qualified to operate, regardless if it's transmission, substation, distribution, whatever. And we do that quite a bit. Porcelain insulators. We went from plastic to porcelain to glass to porcelain, back to plastic. I don't know. The plastic ones are lighter than the porcelain, for sure. Uh, I've seen all types of insulators fail, really. Do they use fiberglass or metal booms on the trucks? Uh, it's metal, but there's a fiberglass section. Like the main boom section is all fiberglass. The knuckles are generally metal. What's up? I'm a solar installer teacher from NYC. Any, any solar experience to share? So I mentioned at the start of the video, I did just have solar installed in my house. Not an expert in it, but I'm gonna release a video called Bob's Plan Goes Solar. Hopefully by the end of April, we're going to have the installers answer a whole lot of questions. So I'm hoping that's going to be a real good video for you guys all to watch. Aaron Marichik Mar Mar from a fellow Aaron. I'm not an electrician, but I work in IT and find your videos fascinating. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Appreciate that very much, fellow Aaron. Checking the map, I can see the hospital appears to be on a single 69 KV line with its own substation that branches out to the neighborhood. That's very possible. 
most annoying call getting called out for a customer trip breaker and dispatcher didn't contact the customer to walk them through resetting it yeah those are those are a pain easy money calls a lot of times when you show up and it's just a breaker one side of you is like oh yes i can go back home the other side of you it's just kind of like oh this is such a waste of time so they're kind of kind of bittersweet litter fart hope everyone's having a great week Spurch, spurch, what's your biggest oopsie that you ever did? The biggest oopsie I ever did that was like dangerous. And I actually filmed an entire video explaining this once and I didn't post it because I didn't have enough visuals and I didn't like the format of the video. Maybe I should post it anyways, but I'll give you the super skinny version. We were running new conductor, uh, probably 50 span, two odd ACSR. We ran the conductor below the neutral on the pole on uh, on blocks on the pulley system basically it came off our wire trailer went out went through a rope pulled through 50 poles back down the other end we secured it with a set of come alongs when we cut that wire off the trailer i was holding that wire in one hand and the lead at the time i think i had like maybe one year i was first block apprentice i held that wire I wasn't holding all 50 span. There was a set come along on the next pole. So I was holding maybe 50 meters of wire. And I reached out and grabbed the down guy for leverage to pull it tight and ground it against the down guy. Well, I had a piece of wire in my left hand that wasn't isolated. We did have a ground on every five span, but there was a transmission line nearby that was creating some capacitive coupling, which was then creating circulating current through all the grounds. And then I grabbed onto an anchor rod with my right hand. And I don't know what voltage I got, but it went in through my left hand across my heart and out my right hand I kind of got locked on but kind of didn't because I had so much tension I fell almost instantly it hurt a lot it scared me a lot it sucked don't ever put yourself across two two different conductive objects that even have a possible chance of having a different potential shorty picks uh, just started a new job as a power system operator. I learned a lot from your channel and look forward to seeing it all for real. Thank you very much. Houston, Texas, Seabass. Local power company out here is reposting most of the wooden poles with these big hollow composite poles. What is your stance on that? We've got some here. I tried them out. I installed one. They're a huge pain to drill. They are much more durable, uh, much more expensive, like $4,000 a pole instead of 400 there's a place for them overall if every pole we had to work on was a composite one that would kind of suck It'd take a long time to work on them but you're not going to get ants and bugs and woodpeckers on them either so they're definitely more durable more rugged withstand bumps from vehicles a little bit better have you ever experienced cold load pickup where a line has been de-energized for a while and once energized lateral tap cutouts blow due to inrush current all the time uh that's a video I've been meaning to do for a while, is code load pickup. Every time I have the opportunity to film one, things are just way too hectic to even think about taking out a camera or taking the time to explain everything. One of these days, I will capture something with that. But basically, yeah, cold load pickup, you get a minus 35 day, power's been out all day, everyone's freezing. As soon as those power, that power comes on, everyone's cranking their heat, saying, it's almost like voting where you say, oh, my one little vote's not gonna matter. When there's 2,000 customers out, we tell them, don't crank up your heat. One guy's like, ah, it's just me. It doesn't matter. I'm going to crank up my heat in case power goes out again. But everyone thinks that way, overloads the system, and it starts popping fuses everywhere. So then we have to actually physically go out and disconnect lines and pick up sometimes 50 customers at a time. And it's a long, slow process. If when there was big outages, everyone really stuck to it and for an hour, didn't turn anything on except maybe the lights, let the fridges and hot water kick in, it would make things go a lot smoother for sure. Brendan Galios, Pancake, I used to engineer for Excel, P, SEO, I feel your pain. Have you seen life on the line? Yes, that is not life on the line at all. We don't walk down train tracks with hot sticks, shoving live wires out of the way while they're sparking. No, you just kill the line. And that's whole, yeah, it was a Hollywood movie. Hi from Georgia, got bad storm, tornado watch, resetting poles that are not straight. Hello, Bob from UK. Do you face sequencing in long rural roads next properties? Like we do in the UK, each house is supplied from a different phase and sequence. Uh, yes, we do. Our, our houses are fed off single phase, but off three phase line. 
we'll leapfrog three phases so we don't overload one of those three phases. When one of those three phases takes off into a subdivision, if it grabs 25 houses and the next subdivision only grabs five, we'll make sure the next few lines go off, say the center phase and opposite phase. We try to keep them all balanced out to reduce the amount of return current in the neutral as much as possible. I gotta get back in the rink here real soon, guys. So I'm gonna try to blow through these. I really don't wanna skip anyone's questions. I'm 10 minutes behind on my questions right now. Uh, hey Fish, howdy Bob, long time viewer, first time chatter. Hope you're doing well, amigo. You're the guy I think of every time I see a lineman out doing their things, love their videos. I appreciate that very much. Accepted after passing physical assessment, by the way. Thomas Solis, nice. Hello from Toledo, Ohio. I'm just gonna skip through, guys. I really apologize for this. You put out great videos, thank you very much. Frederick, Daya Puthan, hi Aaron. Sorry chat truncated my message from Catella. Studying electrical engineering. When you're a bird on the wire, can you feel the energy while it's going through you? No, you cannot. Not really. You can feel a little bit of a tickle on your neck in some circumstances. <laughs> 3 a.m. trouble call. The equivalent to a VFD 3 a.m. trash can fire sucks. Michael Bishop, then I don't contribute to the cold load pickup. Perfect. I watched Life on the Line movie too. Have you had power crews from out of state? We've had power crews from all over North America and beyond, really. We had a whole crew during one storm all from the Philippines. They sent like 50 guys over from the Philippines. Great crews. Basically, each crew had one communicator that was really fluent in English, and the rest of them not so much. So there's a bit of a language barrier with a few of the guys, but uh, love them, fellas. That was a really, real fun storm. Heather, Heather is a longtime viewer, always commenter. Hi from Wisconsin, enjoying hanging out and listening. Appreciate you always stopping by, Heather. TikTok Algy, thank you for all the information vids. We appreciate you. Stay safe. Kevin, your mom says hi. <laughs> All right, we're at the bottom of the question. I'm going to read this last one, and then i got to go, guys. Hi, Aaron. Any chance you do more videos with underground facilities? I know you have some good pad mount transformer videos, but I'm thinking underground transformers and switch gear. Definitely going to try to head downtown and uh, get some coverage while the guys are building a lot of the downtown infrastructure on that. That's a big plan for this summer. i got two more. This is this is it, guys, because i got to go. Young fella's going to be looking for me. Do you still have to pay the power company as a customer if you're employed by them? Just a question. Yeah, our our bill's no different than a regular customer. There's no discounts. It's literally identical to being a regular customer. Uh, whenever there's a major storm, power companies travel to other locations to help other power companies restore power. So yes, we do. We've traveled all the way down to Florida from from Eastern Canada for storm work, and a lot of linemen return the favor and come in our direction. So I hate to cut this super short, guys. Um, a few of you left a couple of coffee tips there. I appreciate that very much. Um, stay safe. Thank you, Simon. Trader Joe's. Thanks, guys. I got to head out. Young fella is literally getting off the ice right now. But it's been great fun, guys. I'll try to have some more videos coming up real soon. Be safe, guys. And once again, I can't remember how to end this live chat. So we go through this awkward stage again. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, we got it. All right. See you guys.